another conversational pace review coming at you. This is another, this is a new brand to the channel, right? We've never had La Sportiva on. It is an honor to welcome La Sportiva to conversational pace. May this be a lasting, fruitful relationship. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we got a twofer on deck. Um, this is cool. This is the La Sportiva Jackal 2 and Jackal 2 Boa. So you're getting essentially the same shoe, but upper choices. Um, we don't see that too often where you get the same. We'll, we'll, we'll go into the differences, but it's more or less the same shoe, but you get to pick your upper. That's kind of nifty. Um, <laughs> I guess like future question to the audience, like what's a shoe model that you would love to see upper options on? <laughs> Would you rather pick your midsole, a.k.a. normal, or would you rather pick your upper, a.k.a. La Sportiva? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, how much does that actually matter? We will uh, dive into all of that and find out soon. Uh, before we get going, just wanted to let everyone know that these shoes were provided to us by La Sportiva, but we're under no financial obligation to say whether we like a product or not because we want to keep these reviews authentic and beneficial for you. No one will get to preview or watch this footage before it gets published to YouTube uh shoe stats about the shoes so i've got the regular jackal 2 and this one's 165 dollars finn has the jackal 2 boa that's 185 dollars so it's a 20 dollar um boa dial add-on option i forgot to weigh the shoe and they're very sweaty because i just ran in them so i will just like right now voice over myself with the weights 288 grams 10.1 <laughs> ounces <laughs> We'll see how well I could do that. Stack height, we're looking at 22 millimeters in the forefoot, 29 millimeters in the heel for a seven millimeter drop. That goes for both of our shoes. Um, our midsoles are identical, allegedly. For the materials, um, the upper on the regular Jackal 2 is just an engineered mesh in the forefoot and the tongue, but then we transition to a uh, plastic exoskeleton with plastic overlay along the midfoot so it, it's it's going to be hard to show in the camera but you can actually like kind of see through the material here because there is no other layer uh i've got a gusseted tongue but the gusset's really low so it's actually only coming in right here which leaves this section of the tongue totally open so it's it's kind of like a half gusset uh, Gilly style lacing system, as classic to most La Sportiva shoes, the laces go down pretty low. Pretty rigid heel cup, minimal padding, minimally padded tongue as well. Uh, very robust toe cap. Um, for your shoe, the Jackal 2 Boa, that's you know definitely where we get into some of the differences. So you get the, uh, is that a mid top or a high top? Like where would you classify that? Height. Great question. I would call it a mid top. It's a mid top. Okay. Thank you. The through hiker, um, the through hiker in you coming through with the mid top answer. Um, <laughs> so we're looking at nearly identical forefoots. Uh, you know, your overlay on the the medial side by the ball of the foot starts a little bit sooner than mine, um, where it wraps into the boa dials. We got two boa dials, and they called it a. Um, spiral fit enclosure system which is kind of like a it's kind of like a burrito wrap i don't know if you're able to explain how the materials kind of overlap each other yeah so basically like instead of a traditional tongue you've got this like vented uh super stretchy it's sort of like a neoprene type material that extends up and around the heel collar here so it creates a gaiter and then I would say like with that gaiter you've got the boa dial system and it makes it a super snug fit so like you know, we were thinking about comparisons before we went live. And I would say this upper is the closest we've come so far to the naked sports TR shit that we did, I think like a year ago. Mm, okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like similar shape too, and dimensions once yep. you have it on your foot. So those, those are definitely the big differences. We both got the same midsole, which is, it's a an EVA midsole, but then there is what they call the Infinitu polyurethane inserts. So those PU inserts, uh, there's a 10 millimeter chunk in the heel and a five millimeter chunk in the forefoot. Where we've seen this before is like Adidas Boost is a polyurethane blend foam, um, lasts forever, but very heavy. 
We've also seen these polyurethane inserts in like most recently the Solomon, the S-Lab Ultra 3. Remember that like white section under the yep. middle? Most of these shoe companies use it in chunks as opposed to full midsoles because it is pretty heavy, but it does have pretty fun properties, which we'll get into a little bit later. The outsole is another spot where our shoes differ a little bit. So it's, I believe it's the same outsole pattern. We just have different uh, rubber types. So my shoe, the Jackal I 2 has, yours. yeah, I think that, yeah, they're the same. Just, uh, okay. I've got the red X, you've got the white X, and those are actually, that actually means something. So I've got the Friction Red 2.0 outsole, which has a, a mildly sticky rubber in the middle. So all the red parts of my shoe are a stickier rubber. All the black is a harder rubber um, so to really, you know, bite into the edges of the trail. Also helps with durability. The Jackal Boa has... La Sportiva's friction white rubber, and that's on the entirety of the outsole. Um, so there's no color coordination there, but that's one of La Sportiva's, La Sportiva's stickiest rubbers. So you actually have a much stickier rubber as they imagine that the person that picks that upper also would like a stickier rubber outsole. And as we were talking offline, which was a discovery, is that this middle section, which is very, very well color matched to the midsole foam is not actually the midsole foam. And it's a nope. full length rock plate that goes from toe to heel and covers almost the entirety of the underfoot. That was interesting. We'll get some like ASMR proof right here. <laughs> rock plate. Um, so good, good find there, Finn. What, oh, uh, what kind of, what kind of running did you get in with this one? So to, to, to preface it, I got to say, and especially since this is a new brand on CP, like I've always kind of like heard the mythology of La Sportiva secondhand through the likes of, you know, Claire Gallagher and Ben Yacht Marmisol and these other trail running greats. But I will say this is the first time I've ever put a La Sportiva shoe on my foot. And with a brand like La Sportiva, you just you want to head directly in the mountains. Like it's so clear that that is their ethos. You feel it. It has a, an impression on you while running. I felt like I was part of this like mountain runner heritage, like super tapped in. So with that said, this shoe like single-handedly motivated me to want to go after like the beefiest runs I could possibly find in Salt Lake City winter. I only did 39 miles on this shoe. I did it on four runs, but I want to stress that equated to over nine hours of running 20,000 feet of elevation change. One of the runs that I kept going back to uh, since it's Rufa time here in Salt Lake City is what I call the, the Grandeur Overlook Run, where it's about 11 miles. There's uh, 8,000 feet of elevation change. You summit Grandeur Peak, you go back down, cross a street, climb up the overlook, come back down, get back to your car. It's sort of like this, I call it heaven's half pipe in a way. It's a lot of fun, but took this, took this shoe on it three times. So put it through that ringer. Um, and yeah, like I want to stress, like put this in as mountainous type conditions that I possibly could given the, the winter time here in Salt Lake. Yeah, definitely. And I've got, so I, I put 50 miles on, on this pair and we were kind of texting too, after we both ran in it once we were like, this isn't a daily trainer type shoe. You know, we kind of both concluded that neither of it, it would, we could take it to a hundred miles and just force running in it every day. But we both realized after one run that that wasn't really the purpose of the shoe. So we'll talk a little bit about durability, but it was more like the niche use cases for where the shoe really excels, which, you know, I, I don't know, I guess, it, you know, it only took, you know, really 50 miles or less to, to figure that out. So that's kind of why we didn't run the full hundred in it. And that's, you know, as with some of our previous reviews where we didn't do it to the hundred, that's not because the shoe was unrunnable. It was just simply because like this has some pretty specific use cases. And um, I don't know, I feel like we both kind of figured out where the shoe works well. You know, you got to hammer some vert, some steep ups and steep downs. How was your boa upper? It was pretty good, like around the forefoot and the midfoot, really good lockdown. Um, maybe we can get into this later in the conversation or now I, I did have a little bit of trouble with heel lockdown and I'm not sure if that's sort of like where the placement of the boa dials are. 
I actually genuinely was like at a loss for why that might be the case because I think that mm. like the system works great on two thirds of the foot. And there was just a little bit of like heel lift uh, on climbs that I noticed, even when like I loosened, well, I loosened them intentionally for a lot of reasons, but was just generally struggling to find a setting with the dials that gave me just as good lockdown in the heel as in the midfoot and the forefoot. So that was, that was an issue with the fit for me, but um, yeah. How was the width for this? Cause you know, a lot of people like, see La Sportiva and it's, you know, it's a narrow mountainous, almost come from yeah. the climbing heritage type shoes. And on the yeah. La Sportiva website, this one is listed as higher cushion, more plush ride, wider shoe, which I think speaks volumes, no pun intended, <laughs> to the lack of volume of some other La Sportiva shoes. Yeah. How is, how is the width, um, especially across like the forefoot and toe box for you? Honestly, the, the, the width was wider than expected. I mean, you know, make no mistake. It's definitely a firmer, like slimmer fit than what we've been testing recently. Like it was definitely a shock to the system after testing out the Caldera a few weeks back. Um, yeah. but like, I also think that's like, as I learn more about shoes, like that's the trade-off you make for a more like technical terrain oriented shoe to get that security, to get that protection but it's not like totally all in on a race like fit. And that's what kind of surprised me. Like you, like even after two and three hour runs, like over on Granger peak, I still felt like I could have gotten more time in it. Like I could have done like a, like a mountain 50 K or a mountain 50 mile in it and probably been okay. So it -hmm. wasn't so race like that. I was like looking forward to taking the shoe off in like a ski boot type fashion. Like it just wasn't like that. Yeah. That's how I felt too. Um, definitely not wide. But I don't think I would say it's narrow either. You know, I've I the only other La Sportiva shoe that I had worn was the La Sportiva the Lycan, and yep. that one was a narrower fit than this one, as well as lower volume. And yeah, you know, I think your Boa upper is probably it, it, it's supposed to be a little bit lower lower volume than yep. uh, than mine as well. So if you did want a little bit higher volume, even though they're built on the same platform underfoot, uh, the forefoot of of the regular upper is going to provide a little bit higher volume. I didn't have any heel slippage issues with the laced version. So maybe that goes into just having the more traditional heel cup um, as well as all of the lace crossovers instead of the convenience of the two boa dials. So I didn't have any heel slippage issues. I I had a couple lockdown issues, but that was more this upper having so much plastic overlay mm-hmm. i needed to um i needed a couple runs to break the materials in soften them up and figure out how tight i was supposed to tie the shoe turns out i need to tie the shoe pretty tight um i just simply wasn't tying it tight enough and i always get worried that i'm going to bruise you know some of the spots like the top of my foot when i tie it really tight the material is smooth enough they even added like a little bit of extra padding um around some of the lace eyelets yeah, perhaps to help against that bruising. So, you know, the, I, I did like a, a long downhill tempo this morning and had no issues with lockdown. Like my toes were good and I felt, I felt pretty nimble in this shoe. So, uh, yeah, I like, I like this upper. Um, it just took a couple runs to really figure it out. The one thing with, uh, this, I don't know if it's the upper kind of the whole shoe is the sizing, the American to European sizing chart on La Sportiva's <laughs> website is interesting. So I was recommended to go up a half size. So mine is a size 10 and a half. If you look at the tag, it says US 10 and a half. Your tag says US 12 and a half. But my European size, which is how this shoe is built, this shoe is built on the European sizing scale. And then they just kind of try and match up the US sizing scale accordingly. So mine says a US 10 and a half, but it's a European, European 43 and a half Mm. on some of the shoe boxes back there behind me. I was looking a European 43 and a half is either a nine and a half or 10 on most of those boxes. Whereas for La Sportiva, it was a 10 and a half and it was almost too short it was right on the bubble like if i were to buy the shoe again i would consider going up to a euro 44 
which yeah. <laughs> they would say is a US 11, which is absurd because the, my, the Hoka Mafate box over there, a US 10 says it's a Euro 44. So you got to look at the European and US sizes on a couple shoes before figuring out which La Sportiva size you're going to get. Because even your 12 and a half is like a 46. 46. And yeah. A Hoka 12, so a half size smaller, they say is 46 and two thirds. So, yeah. Lo- long story short, it's a mess across <laughs> the whole, every, all of them. But you, you kind of need to figure out what your exact actual European size is to get the right size for a La Sportiva shoe. When you said it's a mess, it reminded me. Have you seen the campaign with Zach Galifianakis? Just once, Mar- but like... Mar- Marty I- Huggins. It's a mess. We're going to Washington to clean it up because it's a mess. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put that on my uh, watch again list so that way I can <laughs> truly appreciate uh, your movie reference. <laughs> Someone in the comments, hopefully, redeem me here. But um, yeah, for sure. One one thing one thing I want to say about the boa dials because I, I do think it's a really interesting concept to put boa dials on like a technically oriented mountain shoe. One thing that I did test on one of my runs was on the uphills. I would loosen the dials up a little bit just to allow my feet to kind of breathe more and get more flexibility. And then when I would summit like Grandeur Peak, I would tighten them up again. Uh, just like a couple clicks, you'd get more security. I feel like you get more like of like a like an athletic performance orientation. Totally, and that was cool to kind of like map the fit of the upper to where I was terrain wise. And I know like there are some people out there that are like team laces, some are team boa. I'm team boa for this reason. Like it is cool how you can change up the feel of the shoe mid run depending on where you are. So, like I said, there was really good lockdown in the forefoot in the shoe. And in the midfoot, and it was cool to have that like adaptability and like really precise dialing in for just certain sections of runs. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I would have liked to have that because it just took me a couple times to figure out the laces of the shoes and like to get the proper lockdown. I have to tie the shoe pretty tight. I don't need to do that for the climbing though. So in in the scenario that you're talking about, I would have loved to be able to loosen this shoe up a little bit. And then tighten it back down for the descending because once you get it pretty tight, it's a it's a blast uh, to descend yeah. it. In terms of um, kind of the midsole and outsole, you know, we talked earlier about how it's kind of a niche shoe. I thought it was funny that La Sportiva called this a higher cushion shoe because yeah. I thought it's pretty dang hard. Like the shoe's pretty firm. I'm not. Yeah, I ran. I did a. I did a three hour, three hours was my longest long run. It was all on like dry dirt and like my feet were starting to feel it by the end. Like it's definitely not a shoe that you're just going to go like jog a huge amount of miles in, but like running on more technical single track with rocks or snow or like stuff where you got to think and you need the shoe to work with you. Um, this ended up being, being great. And for a shoe like that, I'm not demanding a ton of cushion. You know, I want protection and to feel agile what did you think of the kind of the midsole cushion? I feel like it was not like a, like you said, it's not a performance oriented midsole. Um, just like I had to kind of go to the website for this, the La Sportiva site, because I was feeling self-conscious about my 39 miles in the shoe. Um, <laughs> although we're a time on feet household here. So I'm really, yep. you know, banking those nine hours. Um, yeah, I, 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 I want to say that over time, it's going to be pretty durable. Like it's advertised pretty protective, but like, it's I, I wouldn't classify it in like the responsive realm or like in the performance realm. Yeah, like you said, pretty firm, kind of like blocky. I did do one road run on it, and that was kind of the feel for me. Uh, it's yeah, it's out of its element when you're not in the mountains. And like for where I live and where I train, there's not a ton of times where I'm like absolutely gonna pull this shoe because it's like I live in the mountains, but it's not like big mountains it would be more like foothill type trails so like maybe my occasional faster workout or like if i'm going on if i'm, if I'm going to go visit you in salt lake and we're going to go on some big runs then maybe i'd bring this shoe but uh i thought the rock protection was outstanding especially like the smaller golf ball ones yep. that can come up and zing your foot it's got that full length rock plate i thought the outsole grip was fantastic i really like this outsole pattern um i had zero issues with you know, mud or 
sloth or snow or anything like that. Cause I did get to run in the snow and also, you know, did a faster workout this morning, uh, running downhill pretty hard. And I felt very, very glued to the ground. So, um, you know, kudos to La Sportiva for a nice outsole pattern and like pretty high quality in-house rubber. The, I will say the the outsole was a slight concern for me on s- like snowy terrain. Um, I, if I had to guess, because I, on, I only ran on this on snow and ice. Um, that was just kind of like the hand we were dealt here in Salt Lake. If I had to guess, this is more like a three season technical trail shoe. And I would avoid snow if I could or sloppy conditions if I could. Like I did have a fair bit of slippage and I wasn't feeling as confident as I might in like a Hoka Mafade going downhill mm. um, yeah. on grandeur. Granted, like there were some pretty steep pitches and like there was some ice, but it wasn't at the hold there wasn't as reliable as I thought it was going to be in those winter specific conditions. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to see what this is like when you take it out, like during the summer on just like rocks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like that's probably where the sticky rubber outsole of yours is going to like really come in handy. Yep. So in terms of, uh, I guess we touched on it a little bit, you know, where, where does the shoe work best? I think you, like you had said, even for mine as well with the non boa upper, I think this shoe is just the most comfortable in the mountains and like the steeper, the terrain, the rockier, the better this shoe is going to be, the more it's going to make sense. What do you think? Yeah. Oriented towards moving in steep terrain is the way, like it's what came to mind on my last run in this shoe. Like it's totally meant for that. Um, yeah. So would you race in it? Are there any races that you would pull this shoe for? I actually would. And for weird reasons, Brett, I don't know if you know this about me, but like one of my like weird hobbies that I've only told like two people in this world too, is that I, I love researching concept cars and this feels like one of those concept cars for shoes. Like this is my 1995 Chrysler Atlantic, you know, like I'm, I'm just, I'm just so like fascinated by it. And I do want to like try it as often as possible. I think I would run like a mountain 50 K or a mountain 50 mile on this largely because I love the adjustability of the Boa dials and I didn't feel my feet did not feel exhausted after three hours time on feet. Like I was not necessarily Mm. itching to get out of the shoe. And I think you like given the dialing, like you can create like more of like an athletic upper feel. And so, yeah, I I would totally give it a try. So interestingly, I would also consider racing in this, I think a little bit shorter. So I was thinking like you're like this, the, the, what is it? The 25 K at speed goat. Yeah. Um, no, that's a, that's a great example. I would consider this, I wouldn't wear it for the 50 K that's too long for me. I would probably go to a little bit, just more comfortable nimble shoe, like the Solomon S lab ultra, or even the normal Shrek for like, say the speed goat 50 K same deal with like the rut. I would do the shorter of the distances there. Same with broken arrow. I would do the shorter one, not the longer one. What else? Like a mammoth trail fest. I would do the 25 K but not the 50 K all of those shoes still require like some pretty hard running and like faster, like technical for a race, not technical, just in like real, like the outside life, but like within the constraints of a race course, it's technical. I think Mm. this would perform really well there. So I would consider the shoe for, for all of those types of courses. We talked a little bit about competitor shoes. We'll run through that briefly. Um, Yeah you know, both of our shoes are competitors with each other because the consumer is, I don't know. What do you think? The consumer doesn't need both the Jackal 2 and the Boa. I don't know. We we might be introducing a European audience to CP today, given the La Sportiva review, and and maybe they do take their quivers very seriously and and the the depth of their quivers is deep and it's not, it's not out of the question to have both of these. I mean, maybe, maybe that's the case, but like, I'm not, I don't need both of these. I think, yeah, like, I think the boa upper actually would be fun to have. And then, you know, this shoe, because yours has a boa upper, it doesn't have as many like true competitors. Like you had said, like the naked TR for that, you know, mid height, super locked down, narrow, go fast kind of shoe. Um, When you eliminate the, the mid top boa upper, you know, you have something like this. Then we're looking at like, the normal Chirac is lighter, a little bit more flexible. This might perform better in sloppy conditions. 
yep. we're looking at, you know, maybe um, like like the Saucony Peregrine is very similar in terms of the fit and the feel. The Peregrine's probably be a little bit wider. Um, this La Sportiva is going to have a slightly beefier upper, but, you know, we're kind of in that realm as yep. well. So there's definitely some competitors, but, you know, I think at, in terms of like where it doesn't overlap on the Venn diagram is when you get up into the gnarly mountains, this is definitely still very much like a more gnarly mountain shoe, which brings us to the value, the, the regular Jackal 2's 165, it's just a $20 upgrade, 185 for the BOA. How do you feel about that price point? I feel great about it. Given where most other Boa dialed shoes are price point wise, I think that's a great value. Um, are we learning that the Boa dial markup might be not as big as we've been led to believe? Exactly. Like these, these, yeah, exactly. I'm going to leave it at that. That's, that's a really good insight. Like should the Boa markup really not be more than $20? <laughs> it turns out they're 20 bucks. <laughs> turns out so i think 165 for this for this shoe is fair i feel like i'm gonna get it's a shoe that i would have in my quiver for a long time um because the the polyurethane inserts in the midsole those just like don't really ever break down it's a firmer shoe there's not like soft cushioning that we're gonna pack out honestly i feel like what if i just kept wearing this shoe i would probably I'd probably blow something out on the upper first before anything else. Not to say that the upper is not durable, but I'm just saying like the type of running I would take it on. I imagine the midsole and the outsole would hold up really well. And I would probably just rip something on the upper, which is something that I've commonly seen on some La Sportivas. People, yeah. The people who wear La Sportivas, they trash their shoes. And that's a good thing. I mean, I think that's cool that they wear it to the point where the upper blows out because the rest of the shoe holds up just fine. So I think for, you know, 165 and 185, I think that's totally fair. Yeah. I am. One thing I pledged to do, Brex, I know we're probably going to do like a, a year end wrap up of shoes. I, I think I'm going to, I'm definitely going to save it, but I think I'm going to put a few more miles in it midsummer, maybe out at Hard Rock, just in like a summer climate to see how it holds up on ascending, descending, pretty steep, challenging terrain really curious to see that so this this will definitely be one of those shoes that i that i keep in the rotation even if just a little bit minimally to see how it does in other seasons because i feel like my view is a little bit limited given that it was winter here yeah totally i'm gonna hang on to these i don't know when i'm gonna put them on again in like full transparency but maybe if i do end up going on a run over in salt lake this summer with you maybe this will be one of the shoes that i bring but yeah you know if you want to if you want to try these out I'm just going to link below to the La Sportiva website because uh, I don't think Running Warehouse has La Sportiva right now, so that's okay. We'll just uh, we'll just we'll just go full direct to consumer for you. Um, do La Sportiva solid, I guess. But uh, yeah, let us know what you think. If uh, are you on Team uh, Laced Upper or Team Boa Dial? Oh, and maybe next time, uh, if we if we get a, another version of this shoe, you could get the boas, and I can get the laces, and we can just have another, you know, switched up kind of experience reviewing. Okay, when they update this, and Jackal Three comes out, Jackal Three. Okay, yeah. I'll get dibs on the Jackal Three boa. You get the yeah. the laced one. All right, sounds good. We'll catch everyone in the next one. Thanks for watching.